I'm here, back at the top of the show. Must be something different. Now, as Star Citizen continues down this road to Digital Citizen Con this year, longtime viewers may remember that that quarter three is always just a, a little bit different in terms of video content as lots of things are being prepared for presentations coming on October 9th. It means that we here at Inside Star Citizen get an opportunity to get creative and highlight some things that we think are pretty special, the people that bring the verse to life. Now we're gonna take this chance to explore stories that perhaps you wouldn't normally see. In today's case, a look at how some of us got into the industry and how our jobs intersect with the traditional art, design, and programming roles that you're probably used to seeing. We're calling these types of segments origin stories, and we hope it'll help you better know the folks who bring Star Citizen and Squadron 42 to life. Enjoy. Games are really important to me, just personally, professionally. I put a lot of myself into the work. What is interesting is that you realize that every game is a miracle. No two days look the same. It's a ton of meetings, removing blockers, highlighting risks, facilitating conversation, asking the dumb questions, basically being a therapist every day, all, all of that. <laughs> Both of my parents are in tech. My mom's a project manager and my dad's a business analyst now. I initially wanted to be a professional horseback rider. Midway through university, I really picked back up gaming and thought, hey, they've got to have project managers for games. I didn't even realize producers were a thing. I ended up graduating university um, administration degree. So found my way into project management, desperately throwing resumes into the industry, just trying to get someone to to pick up the phone and give me a call and give me a shot and started with PlayStation and then ended up coming to SIG about a year ago. Since I've been on the team, my proudest moment is the Nova tank. I got to produce that start to finish. I was the one getting to help the team with estimates all the way at the beginning to getting it out the door to players. It's really hard work and that was a tremendous effort for Fleet Week by the team. Right now we're working on the Starfighter Ares and there's two variants, the Ion and the Inferno. And what makes game dev such a challenge is a lot of the disciplines feed each other. You're constantly playtesting and finding the fun and saying, oh, well, that doesn't feel right. It doesn't, it doesn't feel cool enough. The player isn't gonna enjoy that. We need to make changes. So working with our, our leads and our experts in sort of each discipline that has to touch a ship how long do you think it's going to take you to do these things based on these list of things that we've identified? And then once we kind of have estimates, uh, we go into kind of scheduling and when can we bring this thing home by? We've got some other things that we're not really allowed to talk about that we're working on, but the one I can talk about though is that we've just started the Vulture. We will look at how long it's going to take to build this thing. And so, that comes in sort of the project management life cycle of defining what scope is. And that's figuring out what it means to build a ship and what it's all going to involve. Being in the right meetings so that you can say, hey, wait a minute, my team's doing this and we need to be involved over here and have you had this conversation? And oh, by the way, have you thought of this thing? So you're highlighting risks, you're trying to establish strategies to make sure that they don't turn into issues. Once they do turn into issues, how do you deal with that and make sure everything stays rolling and comes out on time and within our quality metrics and makes the players happy and be a uh, soothsayer in that, you know, you're trying to find the things that are going to be problems before they turn into problems. So Vulture is in early white box stage with our, our lead artist and one of our lead designers jumping on it and working on it. And uh, it's, it's early, but it's coming. What is interesting being a game dev as, as well as a player is it's a miracle that we get anything done. And so the teams I'm running from the you know, other producers I'm interacting with to the global initiatives that I'm trying to just make our game dev experience better for people who work here every day, to leading an ERG with some amazing other women, 
keeping people motivated around me to to deliver the miracle every day is is the best that I can do and it's the best that I can hope for. Production is an essential element throughout all game development. It's that incredibly flexible membrane between departments that helps shepherd each element from one stage to the next. It's populated by a tremendously committed cast of characters like Stephanie and many others, and it's dedicated to making all things possible, including the previously impossible. Now up next, would you believe it's another sprint report? Two weeks in a row, it must be the road to CitizenCon, so let's get started. First up, let's take an early look at progress on refueling currently in active development. Now the sprint here was for the EU PU feature team to see if it was possible to build on work previously done by the EU vehicle tech team for docking, using that as a foundation to push the existing tech further. Now there was some minor skepticism before it was attempted, but everyone involved was thrilled to discover this early test working directly out of the box. It's an auspicious start and a wonderful example of the way one team's work is often used to support another's in game development. Now there's still a ways to go yet, but with the foundation already in place, we can expect development of this feature to continue unabated over the coming months. Next, let's switch on over to the vehicle experience and feature teams and their work prototyping a new system for bombing, necessary for several spacecraft, including the upcoming Hercules Starlifter A2. So where do you start when prototyping a new weapon system? Well, just like with refueling, you begin first with seeing what you can use from existing systems. And of course, that means taking missiles as they currently are, disabling the ignite feature, and voila, we have bombs. And because everything is systemic, this already allows for some creative use cases. As the best star pilot in the galaxy once said, I'll try spinning, that's a good trick. Now, of course, nothing in Gabe Nev is ever just that simple, but it's a solid place to start as work continues developing an, an appropriate bomb operator mode that will allow pilots and gunners to place maybe a little more precision on their drops than what's seen here, as well as further developing smart features like limited guidance capabilities, as well as exploring other use cases throughout the persistent universe. The vehicle experience team is also working on intoxication effects when flying, which includes a delay in player input, penalties for input severity, meaning the harder you fight, the harder it gets to control, as well as a variable inserted at random just to make things interesting. Now what you're seeing here is without the double vision screen effect, but let's turn that on and <laughs> whoa, that's a lot of Radagast gold. Maybe just a little too much. It still needs some balancing. Meanwhile, work continues on the Aegis Redeemer with this look at the gray box progress of the remote turret bay, manned turrets, habitation module, Machine section, and a look at final art progress on the rear entranceway. Alpha 314 brings with it the first iteration of Orzen, but the work doesn't stop there, as these concepts for the upcoming Crusader showroom can attest. Now, the Crusader showroom is the crown jewel of Orzen, your one-stop shop to learn all there is to know about Crusader ships of the past and present, and built so that new offerings can rotate in for the future. And someday, the Genesis Starliner is going to be in here and you're really going to see Disco's favorite ship in action. Someday. 
Finally, before we let you go this week, a special treat. Let's jump way ahead and take a look at current work on the planets of the upcoming Nix system. An unclaimed frontier whose highlight is often considered to be Delamar, the moon-sized asteroid longtime backers may remember as a temporary resident of the Stanton system. Now what you're seeing here are the height map paintings, a process we've showcased in depth on previous episodes of Star Citizen Live, but without an atmosphere, so that artists and directors can properly judge the colors being applied to various shapes. Now what's really exciting here is that through a new refinement of process, we can now avoid the paint-by-numbers rings that have plagued prior efforts when artists try to get exceptionally bold with contrast in terms of value and hue, and are instead now getting these beautiful gradients that move through the terrain, giving us the options of both soft transitions and hard edges where appropriate. So far, this new refinement of process has proven super promising, and the planets of the Nix system are progressing in very interesting directions that have everyone working on them super excited by what's possible. Now, it'll be a while before we see Nix in the Persistent Universe, but you can be certain we'll continue to follow along with its progress over the coming months. Just... wow. You know, I've been doing this a long time, and guess when you think you've seen everything from the planetary teams? They're wizards, Harry. So what did we learn this week? Well, we were reminded that production is an essential element in game development, as well as a rewarding career in the industry for those whose talents lie perhaps just outside the art, design, and programming realms. That new elements like refueling and bombing can get a healthy jumpstart in development when they build on the work of existing gameplay systems. And that there's no such thing as that's as good as it gets when it comes to our planet tech and the teams that work with it. Now, don't forget, we're on the road to Digital CitizenCon right now. It's coming up this October 9th, and there's a video contest that you can participate in. Check out the robertspaceindustries.com website for more details. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week.